Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good afternoon, this is Dr. Padhan here. Welcome to NPTEL project on econometric modeling. So, today we will start a new chapter called time series modeling. So, in the last couple of lectures we have discussed the entire structure with respect to cross sectional modeling. Uh, sometimes you know with cross sectional units, sometimes with time series units, sometimes with the uh, you know integration of both time series and cross sectional that is what we call it say panel data settings. So, today our discussion is completely uh, you know somewhat other side of the pictures where we will directly handle with you know time series modeling. Basically, if we we'll talk about the time series modeling, so the uh, you know the structure is completely or somewhat it is different from the discussion which we have already done. So, okay. so it is partly uh, you know it is a it is something you know very interesting and also something very complex type of problem. So, we will discuss various issues under this particular topics like you know volatility modeling then you know unit root co integration bar modeling etcetera. So, uh, with specific you know with respect to time limits. So, we have to restrict our discussion with certain components. In fact, time series modeling itself is a another subjects. So, it is not possible to cover each and every components of the time series modeling, but what is essential points uh, as per the needs. So, we have to discuss on that as a, uh, aspects only. So, anyway, so this time series modeling, uh, so what is all about this time series components? So, time series modeling basically time series modeling basically deals with the two types of problems okay one is called as a univariate time series modeling and another is called as a multivariate time series modeling okay univariate time series modeling and another is called as a multivariate time series modeling for instance so uh, when we will go for uh, uh, when we go for uh, any typical modeling so then obviously the structure is that so uh, we must have a dependent variable and we must have a independent variable sometimes a independent variables uh, I mean some uh, there are two different games altogether. So, in one side there is a one dependent variable with uh, one or multiple independent variables in another structures there are series of independent variable and series of dependent variables. So, in that case we have discussed uh, the problems like structural equation modeling. So, here also the same things we will discuss, but with respect to uh, you know time effects only. So, what is the speciality of time uh, time series here? So, that is very important in this particular lectures. So, time series basically deals with variable with its lags. Okay? So, that means, lag is the most important issue here. Lag is the most important issue here in the case of time series modeling. So, now what is this lag issue? So, basically before we will go to time series modeling in detail. So, I like to highlight few things here. So, why there is a time series? Because time series let us say variable say uh, y, then uh, if I will put like this t, then it is called as a time series component. The same things I can put it is uh, y i, I can put it y i t. So, this is panel data setting, this is cross sectional setting, this is time setting. Okay? So, now uh, we, our discussion today is with respect to y t setting. So, what is all about this y t? The speciality of y t is it is a function of c s t t t and you know it t. Okay? So, it is nothing but uh, you know uh, means it is basically divided into two parts, it is a additive composition and this is multi uh, multiplicative compositions multiplicative multiple compositions multiplicative compositions. Okay compositions. So, this is additive compositions. So, that means the structure is like this C S T plus 
T T plus E T here and in the um, uh, multiple sides so then uh, C S T into T T into E T. In fact, we can take it also logarithm then you can transfer into different formats. Anyway, so the structure is what is CST here that means it is basically time series uh, depends upon so many factors one is the trend factors, seasonal factors, you know uh, irregular components and uh, uh, in fact uh, trend component, seasonal components and irregular components these are the three which we have discussed here CST stands for uh, seasonal trends, uh, this is trend, cyclical trend and you can say irregular trends and you can say sometimes, uh, sometimes it may be cyclical. So, uh, trend the basically it is a trend effect, then seasonal effect, then cyclical effect, cyclical effect, then it is irregular effect. So, there are four different composition through which time, time stage can be uh, decomposed with respect to additive and with respect to multiplications. Okay. So, that means uh, why there is a lag? So, there are various reasons for that. So, one of uh, means basically we divided all these composition into four different aspects. One is called as a trend component, seasonal component, cyclical, cyclical component and irregular component. Anyway, so uh, what we will discuss today, this is not a, a, uh, the class to discuss the basic features of time series. So, we start with a little bit advanced level, so that uh, we will highlight a few imp important or in interesting problems. So, now if you go up your uh, time series components with respect to you know econometric point of view, then obviously we start with like this way. So, time series modeling, time series modeling basically divided into two parts as I have already highlighted univariate time series modeling, then multivariate time series modeling, okay, multivariate time series modeling. So, uh, we start with let us say variables y t, okay. So, I have already mentioned the moment uh, the speciality of time series modeling is that it is a uh, lag introductions, okay. So, uh, if there is a one variable, so we can create a multiple models or you can create multivariate models with respect to its lag length. So, if you really put you know uh, adding one after another lag then obviously, uh, variables will be new variables will be created automatically. For instance, you see here. So, I will write y t equal to function of alpha plus summation beta i y t minus i okay, i equal to 1 to n plus e t. Okay. So, this is one of the structure of time series modeling. So, that too it is a univariate time series modeling. Okay. So, that means we the origin origin is y t. So, we are creating y t minus 1, so y t minus 2, then we are integrating y 2 with respect to y t minus 1, y t minus 2 up to y t minus k. So, depending upon the structure and setup of means very important thing is how much lag length you have to uh, you know introduce in this particular systems. The most interesting or you can say complex process of time series modeling is that it is lag length. Okay. So, the choice of lag length is very important factors. So, the, the there are two basic reasons for that. One reason is that it is not you know continuous process like you know you have to uh, uh, you have to create uh, one after another variables by introducing lag. So, the moment you will introduce one after another lag then obviously, one problem uh, imme immediate problem will face is that the degrees of freedom. So, you will go you will lose degrees of freedom continuously. So, now to avoid degrees of freedom. So, what you have to do? So, you, you have to keep lag length at the optimum level. There are certain techniques through which we can choose the lag length. We will discuss in details. So, let me first highlight the structure of time series modeling. Then we will go in details about the choice of lag length or you can say uh, model setting etcetera. Okay. So, especially, especially there are two structures here uh, you know univariate time series modeling structures then multivariate time series structures. So, in the case of univariate time series structures the structure is y t as a function of y t minus 1, y t minus 2 up to y t minus k. Okay. So, now in the case of multivariate time series modeling it can be divided into means here the speciality of this particular is it is one, one variable setup. Okay. So, this is more than one. Okay, this is more than one variables. Means the variable is one here, but we are creating additional variables with respect to its lag only. So that means the uh, uh, the uh, the game is only with respect to single variables. 
So, now we are creating with respect to its a past observations or past trends, then obviously we are creating additional variables. But in the case of multivariate time series modeling, so here, so we, we at least have two different variables. So, uh, in that case, if it is uh, if it is more than uh, more than one time series variable, then the model can be further divided into two types. One is called as distributive lag models, another uh, another is called as auto regressive lag models. Okay, so DLM so it is called as a distributive distributive lag models. Then this is called as a auto regressive auto regressive auto regressive lag models okay auto regressive lag model uh, distributive lag model and auto regressive lag model so what is distributive lag models so uh, it is you know the structures like you know uh, while put like this y t equal to alpha plus beta x t plus summation beta i x t minus i i equal to 1 to n plus u t oh, this is form of a distributive lag models in the auto regressive uh, lag models so we can write like this view y t equal to alpha plus uh, beta x t plus gamma y t minus 1 plus b t okay plus b t so i can write like this way so that means you see here so the clear cut difference uh, with respect to auto regressive and distributive model is that so, in the case of distributive lag model, it is the endogenous variable as a function of exogenous variable, but in the case of auto regressive model, it is endogenous variable as a function of both endogenous variable and exogenous variables. So, that means, uh, uh, so uh, all together time series modeling can be divided into three groups, one is called as a univariate time series modeling, another is called uh, you know multivariate time series modeling, that two auto regressive scheme and another is called as a distributive lag scheme. So, we like to know details about what is the auto regressive scheme and what is the distributive lag scheme. So, let me first highlight various uh, various uh, forms of time series modeling. So, that we usually handle uh, in the econometric modeling. Okay. So, you see here uh, generally the, we start with like this way y t equal to alpha plus beta x t let us say. Okay. So, uh, I am starting with multivariate framework only. So, y, y t equal to alpha plus beta x t plus u t this is a simple time series modeling with respect to two variables y t and x t. Okay. So, now uh, within this particular setup, so I will create another model here so y, t, y t equal to alpha plus beta 0 x t plus summation beta i x t minus i i equal to 1 to n plus u t this is another model it is called as a distributive lag models. Okay. So, uh, I can write another models y t equal to alpha plus beta x t plus gamma y t minus 1 plus b t. So, this is another model this is called as a distributive lag models and this is called as a auto regressive lag models. Okay. So, that what we have already discussed then another form of the models we will present here is y equal to alpha plus uh, summation beta i x t minus i i equal to 1 to n plus uh, summation gamma i a uh, gamma i a uh, u uh, ok gamma i y t minus i i equal to 1 to n plus you can say b t ok this is another form of the models. So, uh, this is lag models with various uh, 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 various you know lag effect. So, then another models I will put it here. So, y t equal to y t equal to alpha plus beta 0 x t beta 0 x t plus beta 1 x 1 t square x t a beta 1 x t squares ok then beta 2 x t minus 1 plus beta 3 x t minus uh, 1 squares plus continue beta n x t minus uh, t minus n ok plus beta n plus 1 x t minus x t minus a n uh, x t minus n squares okay, plus e t okay, error terms. So, this particular structure is called as a polynomial lag distributive lag models, it is called as a poly polynomial distributive lag models. Okay. So, I will write another models y t equal to alpha plus beta 0 x t plus beta 1 x t minus 1 okay, plus continue plus e t. So, this particular scheme is called as a infinite distributive infinite 
distributive log models infinite distributive log models okay infinite distributive log models so now you see uh, all together so we have various forms of the models starting with the univariate framework where uh, yt as a function of its log length uh, means you, uh, you have to create uh, the moment you will use a log length then obviously you will create additional variables like yt minus 1 yt minus 2 up to yt minus k but you cannot uh, create an uh, uh, you know infinite number of variables in a particular system because uh, if the sample size is uh, limited then obviously every creation of log uh, additional variable will lead to uh, you have to you lead to lose of 1 degree of freedom so that means we have to lose every times 1 degree of freedom so you must be very careful before handling the uh, or before you proceeding to the time series modeling okay so these are the schemes under uh, 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 you can say uh, 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 various forms of time series modeling. So, now uh, there may be uh, generally when we will go for multivariate schemes, you will find there are two different methods altogether. So, in one case it is called a uh, distributive lab schemes and another case is called as a auto regressive lab scheme. So, now uh, generally, uh, between the two, auto regressive loss scheme is much important than the distributive loss schemes because here we are handling uh, uh, handling the log length of both the variables together. So, in the case of uh, in the case of distributive log model, so we are just incorporating you can say uh, dependent variables say yt as a function of xt and its log length. So that means uh, what is the exact difference here? In the case of distributive log model, it is the endogenous variable as a function of exogenous variable and its error term. But in the case of autoregressive log models, so it is the endogenous variable as a function of endogenous log and exogenous variable and exogenous log. So that means it is like this. In the case of distributive log models, so it is the endogenous variables endo as a function of exogenous variable and uh, and its log okay and its log so this is the structure of distributive log models okay so in the case of auto regressive log models in the case of auto regressive mo log model it is the endo endogenous variables as a function of uh, exogenous variables and exogenous log uh, then uh, endogenous log endogenous log okay t minus i i will create here t minus i this is how the structure is all about in the case of distributive log models and auto regressive log models so that means uh, uh, i i hope you, you understand the concept of endogenous and exogenous endogenous is nothing but dependent concept and exogenous nothing but independent uh, independent uh, variables okay so the thing is that uh, in the time series modeling uh, it's very uh, difficult to say that it is a, a variable which is totally independent in the time series setting so a variable which must have a integration with the previous observation so that's why a variable time series model in the case of time series model a variable it's a very means it's a very less impact that uh, uh, it is totally independent to others so there are various problems you have to find out and as a result there are lots of interdependence exist in the case of time series setting so as a result so, uh, the variables which you are considering in a particular system, so it must have some log scheme. Okay. So, that log scheme we have to, you can say highlight and we have to play the game with respect to various logs. So, uh, uh, in fact, what is the uh, important agenda is here that, so uh, most probably auto regressive log models uh, is better choice than the distributive log models because uh, here there is involvement of log in with respect to both the variables endogenous variable and exogenous variable in the case of distributive log model it is only endogenous variable as a function of exogenous variable and its log length but uh, uh, where the lacking point is that it is the, there is no such endo log here but uh, uh, if the system has a endogenous variable uh, in a system where you know endogenous variable as a function of uh, log endo and log exo uh, including you know original ex exogenous variables then obviously the system will be more uh, more uh, appropriate and you can say more authentic so that's why auto regressive log model is better choice than the distributive log models but uh, but uh, distributive log model can be transferred into auto regressive log model. So, let me highlight how you can transfer all these things. So, uh, we will start with a mod models like this. Let us say yt equal to alpha 0 plus beta 0 xt plus beta 0 xt plus beta 1 xt minus 1 
plus beta 2 x t minus 2 ok plus beta 3 x t minus 3 plus continue beta k x t minus k plus u t ok. So, now what I will do I will put beta 0 beta 0 uh, or I will put like this way beta k is equal to beta 0 lambda to the power k ok. So, beta k means k here k stands for 1 2 up to uh, in fact, we can call this k, this k ok beta k is 1 2 up to k up to k ok or you can take it n. So, then you will put it here n then obviously, it is t minus n. So, let us assume that uh, since it is a k number of series. So, we are putting beta k equal to beta 0 lambda to the power k. So, as a result this series will continue like this way. So, I can transfer this particular structures you know. So, y t equal to alpha 0 plus beta 0 x t. So, ok beta 0 x t beta 0 x t all right. So, beta 1 I can write it here uh, then beta 0 lambda to the power if I would put beta 1 then it is beta beta 0 lambda to the power 1 then x t minus 1. So, ok. So, then if I put beta k equal to 2 then beta 2 oh, oh, beta 2 oh, sorry beta 0 beta 0 this one beta 0 uh, lambda lambda to the power 2 then x t minus 2 ok it will continue then finally beta k uh, lambda to the power k x t minus k. So, this this particular component ok beta k x t minus k. So, there is no point to again introduce n. So, uh, 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 since it is a k number of variables or k number uh, k number of log length. So, obviously, we will take this schemes like uh, in that fashion. So, automatically this series will you transport to uh, by this particular structure. So, what I what I will do here is so uh, ultimately uh, we have y t equal to alpha 0 plus beta 0 lambda t plus beta 0 lambda uh, lambda 1 to the power t plus uh, beta 0 uh, lambda squares lam x t minus 2 ok 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 this is lambda beta 0 lambda t beta 0 lambda x t minus 1. So, ok this is x t minus 1 this is x t minus 2 then it will continue then beta 0 uh, lambda to the power k x t minus k plus u t. So, what I will do now? So, I will create another variables here. So, let us say y t minus 1. So, then alpha 0 plus beta 0 then x t minus 1 ok then beta 0 beta 0 then beta 0 uh, beta 0 uh, lambda to the power 1 uh, lambda to the power 1 x t minus 2 uh, lambda to the power 1 x t minus beta 0 beta 0 x t minus 1 then beta 0 lambda to the power 1 x t minus 2 ok. So, plus beta 0 lambda to the power 2 x t minus 3 x t minus 3 ok it will continue like this way. So, then what I will do? So, I will I will subtract it ok y t minus lambda y t minus 1. So, let me highlight like this way I will create another uh, scheme here uh, y t minus lambda y t minus. So, what I have done here so I multiply lambda in both the sides then I subtract from this equation to this equation ok. So, this is equation number 1 this is equation number 2. So, now I am subtracting equation number 1 minus lambda upon equation number 2. So, then I will get y t minus lambda y t minus 1 then in the same times. So, I will get it here lambda 0 ok lambda 0 uh, then uh, into 1 minus uh, 1 minus uh, 1 minus uh, ok lambda 0 lambda 0 cancels. So, uh, it will be get uh, y t ok lambda y t minus 1 so, ok lambda into y t minus 1 ok lambda 0 plus uh, uh, lambda lam, min, sorry minus lambda alpha 0 minus lambda alpha 0 ok. So, then then beta 0 beta 0 x t minus lambda x t minus 1 ok. Then 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 lambda x t minus 1 ok. So, this will continue ok lambda r t x t minus 1. So, okay, this will continue like this way. So, then this this I will call it you can say uh, I will call it this one's y t. Okay. So, I will call it y t then this is alpha into 1 minus alpha uh, alpha 0 into 1 minus lambda 
then I will call it beta 0 x t ok plus it will continue plus uh, plus 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 lambda y t minus 1 plus b t ok. You see here what I have done here. So, y t then minus lambda y t minus 1. So, I, 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 I got these equations this side in the left side in the right side this is the structure. So, if I simplify I will get like this way. So, I, I am not generalizing this concept. So, now what I have done? So, I am putting y t equal to here then lambda y t minus I am taking in the right side. Okay. So, finally, so I will call it this is let us say gamma then gamma beta 0 x t then uh, let us uh, uh, take uh, uh, you know uh, we summarize uh, let us say uh, other items will be remain constant if I put it in, the, uh, in sequence then obviously it will come down to this uh, particular structure beta 0 x t plus lambda y t minus 1. Okay. So, plus uh, I will call it as uh, epsilon t. So, this is how the form of it is called as a autoregressive lag models. This is the form of autoregressive lag models. Okay. So, now this particular structure is called as a you can say time series modeling with respect to distributive lag schemes to autoregressive lag scheme. So, now uh, let me first uh, means uh, what we conclude here is that uh, autoregressive lag model is more important than the distributive lag models because uh, uh, because there is the involvement of uh, lags with respect to exogenous component and endogenous component. So, uh, now we like to understand what is autoregressive schemes and how it is integrated with the systems. Okay. So, now we will start with the autoregressive schemes, autoregressive, autoregressive scheme. Okay. What is the autoregressive scheme here? Okay. Uh, autoregressive schemes we start with you can say uh, there are various forms of the autoregressive scheme. So, initially it is the simple autoregressive models then moving average models then its integration arma models okay so autoregressives this is stands for autoregressive this is stands for autoregressive this is stands for moving average okay this is stands for autoregressive autoregressive moving average okay autoregressive moving average so, now we start with the, this is one scheme, this is another scheme and this is another scheme. That means, the modeling can be applied to this one, modeling can be applied to this one, modeling can be applied to this one. So, now if I apply modeling to autoregressive scheme, then it will be called as a autoregressive models. Okay. If I apply modeling to this one, then it is called as a moving average models. Okay. If I apply modeling to this one, then it is called as a ARMA models. Okay. ARMA models. ARMA models. Okay. So, let me start with you what is this ARMA schemes. Okay. Uh, so, what, what is the ARMA schemes here is that let us say y t is a function of uh, function of y t minus 1, y t minus 2, uh, y, y t sorry y t minus 2 okay. it will continue y t minus k plus something error terms u t. Okay. So, this is the simple model I will write. Okay. You see in the time series modeling uh, and there are two different structures altogether. So, it is called as a univariate structure and you can say multivariate structure. In the case of multivariate structure, there, there should be at least two variables with respect to its lag. Uh, uh, means, uh, if with respect to two variables say y t and x t, then x t with respect to its lag and y t with respect to its lag. So, that means, finally, how many number of variables in the systems you do not know. So, it is the it is the technique will decide what is the total number of lag uh, involved in this particular structures and what should be the size of the model altogether. So, now the thing is that uh, if you, uh, since there are two schemes univariate model univariate time series modeling and multivariate time series modeling in the univariate structures y t is y t as a function of y t minus 1 y t minus 2 up to y t minus k. So, uh, what we uh, what we will do here is so, uh, in this in this particular univariate time series setting, so we like to connect with you know moving average concept and you know its integration with the autoregressive concept. So, the scheme y t as a function of y t minus 1, y t minus 2 up to uh, and error terms that scheme is called as a autoregressive scheme. Okay. So, that is very very important the structures. So, y t as a function of uh, it is lag okay, it is lag that means it is a endogenous as a function of endologs. So, this particular structure is called as a 
auto regressive scheme. So, that is the you know special features of time series modeling. So, that is how you know auto regressive model is more important than the distributive log models, because we are starting in the time series setting then obviously, a past particular variable always depends upon its past variable. For instance, let us take a case of uh, you know uh, stock price, then stock price today uh, depends upon the yesterday stock price now, uh, stock price value. So, uh, take a case of GDP, GDP uh, for the today say to, uh, for this year GDP T depends upon GDP T minus 1. So, that means, in the time series settings, so one of the standard assumption is that the variables uh, present variable in the present context depends upon it is a past context. That means, it, uh, GDP at a time period say T that is called as a current time period, then it is depends upon its past time periods like T minus 1, T minus 2, T minus 3 like this way. So, uh, theoretically if you say suppose I, 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 I like to invest here today, okay, so the impact will not get immediately. Okay, so, if, for instance, if I, if I uh, suppose I have some uh, amount of money and I like to invest in the educational sectors. So, my impact uh, my, my objective is to know if I will invest this much of money, then what is the impact of education. So, today if I will spend huge money, so that is called as a educational spending. So, then obviously, so the, the impact cannot be immediate. So, the impact will be in the long run and that to next years only. So, that means, so suppose uh, I, I like to study the impact of this spending with respect to you know its effect. So, effect let me educational level means whatever may be the concept or uh, means you say literacy level or something something. So, in that case we will say output after 5 years then 5 years which you have to connect with the present uh, you know this investment. So, that means it is the 5 years lag we have to introduce. So, that means if if that is the y t then obviously, y t depends upon its y t minus 4 okay, or y t minus 5. So, this is how the last scheme is uh, uh, integrated in the system. So, now uh, obviously, so uh, it, it should be continuous, it should be very systematic, it should be you know uh, very feasible in nature. For instance, you cannot directly jump y t to y t minus 5 immediately. So, you go in sequence, then you test it, after that you can uh, you can come to a conclusion how much length you can incorporate to get the particular models or you can say uh, of course, the objective is more or less sense. So, you have to find out the optimal models. So, where uh, means that model is should be best fit and can be used for forecasting your policy. That, uh, that objective always there. So, whatever components we will discuss uh, means uh, what we have already discussed and what we will discuss in future also. So, that means, a, a, a every time objective is to fix a model so which should be very reliable, very feasible, very accurate and it should be used for forecasting and policy use. So, keeping in mind, so we are uh, moving here and there and putting uh, putting different structures, shapes and setup, so that the model can be considered as the best fit and can be used as a uh, you know uh, can be used uh, for forecasting and policy use. So, now uh, uh, our system is here to discuss the autoregressive schemes. So, autoregressive scheme is basically a, a three different formats, autoregressive auto itself uh, uh, it can be mod modeled then moving average concept, then you can say ARMA concept. So, now we have to see how auto regressive and moving average and how ARMA can be finally, concluded means created. So, that means, so let me start with the variables y t, then when I connect y t with respect to log length, this particular structure is called as a auto regressive scheme. Okay. So, now uh, uh, this particular structures, this particular structures I will call is a auto regressive scheme. For instance, uh, if I will put it in a explicit format, the picture will be coming like this way alpha 0, alpha 1 y t minus 1 plus alpha 2 y t minus 2 plus continue alpha k y t minus k okay, plus u t. So, now you see auto regressive scheme for 1, if I will say auto regressive scheme of 1, then uh, I will write y t equal to simply alpha 0 plus alpha 1 y t minus 1 plus u t. Okay. So, if I will say auto regressive of 2, then you have to uh, this 2 1 2 represents the log length scheme. So, y t as a function of alpha 0, alpha 1 y t minus 1 plus alpha 2 y t minus 2 plus u t. Okay. So, this is how the structure will be uh, structure will be continuous. Okay. So, I will put another another structures you know auto regressive 3. 
auto regressive 3, auto regressive 3 is nothing but alpha 0 plus alpha 1 y t minus 1 plus alpha 2 y t minus 2 plus continue alpha alpha 3 y t minus uh, sorry uh, ok it is alpha, alpha 3 no? so uh, there is a, uh, ok uh, let, let me write once again auto regressive 3 is equal to alpha 0 plus alpha 1 y t minus 1 plus alpha 2 y t minus 2 plus alpha 3 y t minus 3 plus you know u t ok so this is this is auto, another auto regressive scheme of order 3 order 3 so that means if i will put here auto regressive uh, 4 then again uh, you have to add further alpha 4 y t minus 4 ok plus u t so if i will put auto regressive 5 then obviously it will be continuous plus alpha 5 y t minus 5 plus u t so this is how it will be continue but the thing is that uh, mathematically or uh, mathematically if you write then it is very interesting and uh, you are just adding one after another and you just know the structure and you can continuously follow this uh, setup. But uh, in reality uh, you cannot uh, you cannot create unlimited variables within a particular setup. So, there is a systematic uh, approach how much lag length you have to consider. So, okay. so it is not you to decide, so it is the system will decide what should be your lag length. Is it auto regressive? The model should be best with respect to auto regressive scheme 1, auto regressive scheme 2, or auto regressive scheme 3. So, the mom, uh, means mathematically when we will go for proceeding like this way. So, uh, of course, what you have to do? So, it is just like in a stepwise process. Uh, in fact, we have a system called as a stepwise regression. So, that is specially used for solving multicollinearity problem. But here uh, the scheme is auto regressive scheme is just like stepwise scheme. So, what you have to do? Here one of the most important agenda is uh, so how much lag length you have to who incorporate in the system. That means, if to the current year uh, out current year outcome of a particular variable depends upon its how much lag length. Okay. So, then say uh, what should be its past observation. So, that is how it uh, means before predicting the y t with respect to future. So, we have to know how it is continuously attached with the past information. So, that is our uh, you know entire objective. So, that means so, it may be 1, it may be 2, it may be k. Okay. So, you, you, it is not you to decide. So, the means it, it is the you know the structure or technique will decide the same. So, let me how how you will find out the structure. So, that means choice of lag length, choice of lag length, choice of lag length is most important factor, is most important factor, is most important factors. You see, it is a very uh, very important issue, why there are two specific regions. First region is uh, the moment you will introduce one after another lag, then obviously you will get uh, every time you will get one after an, every time you will get one after another you can say parameters. So, that has to be estimated and in the same times when you will add one after another variables, you, you like to lose one degree of freedom. So, that means, uh, the moment you will go for one extra leg length, then obviously one variable has to be increased. In uh, other sides, degrees of freedom will be slightly, uh, uh, you can say, dropped. So that means one additional parameter with one degrees of freedom. So that is your equation. So uh, uh, if you will add, to, you know, another variable, then obviously two or uh, two more parameters will be added. Then obviously two degrees of freedom you you are going to lose. So, this is how the because uh, because uh, uh, because of this particular region, it is very very important to understand the optimum lag length. Uh, uh, in fact, in fact, uh, in the time series modeling, uh, one of the condition is that prime condition is that your your number of sample observations should be exclusively very very high. If it is not very very high, then it is very difficult to choose the lag length, okay. choose the lag length or you can say uh, to fix how much variable you have to create within a particular system. Okay. So, now uh, what is our conclusion is that our conclusion is that choice of lag length is most important factor to decide uh, do, to decide the optimum models, time series model. So, there are many techniques are available. So, uh, I will give you briefly here three different important criteria through which you can choose this lag length. Okay. One is called as a AIC statistics, then a SIC statistics, then a F 
PE final prediction error. So, AIC re re represents Akai information criteria, Akai information criteria, it is called as Akai information criteria. So, the statistic is it is nothing but RSS by n e to the power 2 k by n. Okay. R, and this, for, this is the formula RSS by n e to the power 2 k by n. RSS represents residual sum square. So, we know total sum square equal to explained sum square plus residual sum square. So, we need residual sum square. In fact, in fact, in the case of uh, in the case of time series modeling, the residual factor is very important because it is very important to handle various issues, various structures, various setup. So, that is how so one of the agenda to decide the best fit of the model uh, is uh, to uh, to see the structure of RSS. So now through Akai information criteria, you have to find out the best fitness means uh, optimum lag length and uh, goodness of fit of the model. So uh, another statistic is called as a uh, you know squares inform information criteria. Squares information criteria. Okay criterion. So, this is nothing but RSS by n, you know, n to the power, n to the power k by n. Okay. So, here RSS represents residual sum squares, this is residuals, residual sum squares, okay. n equal to total number of observations, k represents number of variables, uh, uh, number of variables in the systems, okay. number of variables in the system. For instance, uh, if it is lag length 1, then obviously there are 2 variables in the system. If lag length 2, then there are 3 variables in the system y t, y t minus 1, y t minus 2. Similarly, if lag length is 3, then obviously there are 4 variables in the system. So, this is how you have to find out the number of uh, the k value. So, SIC, SIC will be calculated like this way, then AIC will be calculated like this way, then final prediction error is nothing but RSS by n, so uh, into n plus k by n minus k, n minus k. So, this is called as a final prediction error. So, now you see here uh, uh, n already defined, k already defined, RSS already defined. So, that means uh, like this there are several other other criteria also to decide the optimum lag length and best fitness of the model. So, now uh, in, uh, in all the cases, so you will find the residual sum square is the criteria through which you have to decide the structures. So, uh, three important items is very important in this particular time series modeling. One is the RSS that is the residual sum square, then n, n represents total number of observations and k, k represents total number of variables in the system. So, that is means of course, we can call it is a uh, uh, lag length. Okay. So, if, if the lag length is 1, then obviously there are 2 variables. If lag length is 2, then obviously there are 3 variables in the system. So, uh, once you add one after another lag, then you will get additional variables, one after another uh, uh, additional variables. But in the same time, you are going to lose lots of degrees of freedom. So, that is why you must be very careful. So, now uh, by this criteria, how to decide? Uh, which particular uh, which particular lag length is important or means we have to fix in the systems. So, now you see uh, in a particular system if the all the statistics are very uh, low and okay, it is continuously declined then obviously you have to you have to choose the lag length uh, continuously otherwise if the uh, if the value of this statistics are very high then obviously you have to stop the lag length. Okay. So, means if you will make a comparative analysis. So, two different time periods or two different models. So, where AIC statistic is less that has to be considered. So, okay. so that means over the time periods, so, uh, you know it is one set of y t, y t minus 1, another set of y t, y t minus 1, y t minus 2, another set of y t, y t minus 1, y t minus y t minus 3. So, every case you have to find out AIC statistic or SI statistic or you can say FPI statistic, final prediction error statistic. Then you check it where it is low. So, that particular model has to be considered as the best model. So, once it is the best considered as the best model, then further uh, uh, additional variable cannot be introduced in the system. So, okay. so you have to continuously check, uh, 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 means once AIC statistics are declining, then obviously you have to add one after another variable in the system. The moment it will be stagnant or start increasing, then obviously you have to stop there and you have to finally say that this is the optimal log you have to consider for the a uh, best fitness of the models. Okay. So, this is the scheme called as a autoregressive schemes. So, now 
coming to moving average schemes, so there is another called as a moving average models, okay. moving average model. Moving average models is the systems, it is called as a uh, y t, y t as a function of u t, u t minus 1, u t minus 1, u t minus 2, okay. then it will continue. Okay, so uh, okay, another variable say uh, Vt. Okay, so error term Vt. So that means you see, so ut as a function of error term and its lag length. So this is more interesting. In fact, uh, what we know earlier, so we start with like this. Let's say, so yt equal to alpha plus uh, beta yt minus one. So let's say this we start with a model like this. Okay, ut. All right. So, then ultimately we need to find out uh, estimated model y head. So, for that we need to have alpha head and we need to have a beta head. Okay. So, once you will get rid of these ones, then uh, then uh, then accordingly we have to fit these models y t minus 1 uh, 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 head, then obviously error term will be removed. So, that means y minus y head you will get the error terms okay. uh, ut or uh, ut or error term ut. Okay, so, now once you have E t then obviously the modeling will be start with respect to E t again. So, y t, uh, y t is a function of function of so E t, E t minus 1, E t minus 2, E t minus 2 it will continue with error another variable scheme. So, now uh, uh, like in auto regressive scheme, so we can uh, we can prepare for moving average scheme also. So, now for moving average, uh, moving average, uh, uh, this is not MR, so this is MA, moving average, moving average 1, then the system will be yt equal to alpha uh, plus beta et, okay, beta et minus 1, so okay, beta et minus 1, so okay, beta et minus 1, so this is vt, okay. So, now moving average upon 2 moving average upon 2. So, then it is nothing but y t equal to alpha plus beta 1 e t minus 1 plus beta 2 e t minus 2 okay, plus v t. So, this is how it will be continuously increase. So, that means in one setup, so you get the auto regressive scheme, in another setup you get the moving average schemes. So, now in the case of auto regressive model, it is the endogenous variable as a function of uh, endogenous lag of endogenous variable okay endogenous variable as a function of lag of endogenous variable so if there are three lags then obviously y t minus 1 y t minus 2 y t minus 3 so if it is four lag y t minus 1 y t minus 2 y t minus 3 y t minus 4 so like this you will continuously increase the lag length so the moment you will increase the lag length then obviously the model complexity will start increasing so, your workload will be very high because you have to estimate the parameters all together. So, uh, and also you have to check the uh, reliability of the model or overall fitness of the model. So, the, uh, the structure is almost all simple econometric modeling which we have already discussed in the cross sectional setting and panel data setting. So, here is so the thing is uh, you start with one variable or two variable or few variables then uh, what is the more additional part or interesting part is that. So, you have to introduce the lag component. Okay. So, that means if there are two, one, you suppose there is a two variables y t and x t, then you have to create y t minus 1, x t minus 1, y t minus 2, x t minus 2. So, continuously you form this particular structure. So, uh, you means there are many, many cases uh, like this. So, you have to find out two most important one which, which will be considered as the best and can be used for forecasting or policy use. So, that means, uh, it is all together it is a decision making process. Okay. So, out of so many possibilities you have to find out the particular case which is more important for you. Okay. So, that is how you have to choose this particular setup. Okay. So, now, so another scheme is called as a, a ARMA. Okay. ARMA. So, we know what is auto regressive, we know what is moving average. Okay. So, now it is called as a auto regressive moving average. Sometimes it is called as a a R I M A Arima, okay, auto regressive integrated moving average methods. Okay, so we will really know what is integrated, that is order concept, integrated of order what. Okay, so that means first we let uh, let me highlight Arma, then we will go for integrations, okay, order of integrations. So uh, we know Y T as a function of uh, Y T minus 1, Y T minus 2, up to Y T minus K, then U T, okay. 
So, then this is moving uh, auto regressive schemes, then moving average scheme is a function of y t, uh, u t, u t minus 1s, okay. it is you can say u t minus k, you can say v t. Okay. So, now what you will do, this is auto regressive scheme and this is moving average scheme. So, now what we will do, we will integrate together. Okay. So, now y t is a function of y t minus 1, y t minus 1, u t minus 1. So, okay y t minus 2 u t minus 2. Okay. So, it will continue y t minus k u t minus k, okay. then error term say epsilon t, then that is the end. Okay. So, this means, so there are uh, there are three different structure of model you will find here, uh, one is called as a auto regressive schemes, another is called as a moving average schemes, then finally, you have to add together, then that structure is called as a auto regressive moving average scheme. So, that means, in the case of auto regressive moving average scheme, it is the endogenous variables as a function of uh, endogenous lag and a error lag. Okay, error lag. So, that means, how do we get all these concepts? So, now, you uh, uh, you see here. So, I, I will highlight here. Okay, this is uh, Okay, uh, let me first, first take it to this case. Uh, this is how univariate time series, multivariate time series, uh, z to x t. Okay, so this is this is a this is a multivariate uh, uh, auto regressive scheme. So here there are two variables in the systems uh, x t and y t. So now we are not integrating x t y t here together. So what we are doing? we are taking one variables, uh, then we are integrating with you know auto regressive scheme, moving average scheme and argon schemes. So, now uh, I have already highlighted what is the setup of auto regressive scheme and what is the setup of moving average scheme, then what is the structure of the uh, integration of auto regressive and moving average scheme. So, now let me highlight one thing here, I mean more explicitly. So, this is auto regressive, this is moving average. So, this is arma, okay. this is arma. So, now what, what we will do in the case of auto regressive scheme, so I will write uh, y t uh, sorry in the case of auto regressive scheme, so I will write y t is equal to alpha plus summation beta i y t minus i, okay. i equal to 1 to n plus u t. Okay. So, this is auto regressive schemes and moving average scheme is nothing but y t equal to uh, gamma plus summation uh, delta i. Uh, u t minus uh, i, i equal to 1 to n plus v t. Okay. So, this is uh, auto regressive and moving average, uh, this is auto regressive and this is moving average, then I will write auto regressive moving average, auto regressive moving average, which is nothing but y t equal to function of let alpha plus plus beta i, beta i y t minus i, okay, i equal to 1 to n plus summation gamma uh, gamma j y t minus j j equal to 1 to n plus b t. So, this particular structure is called as a ARMA model. So, this is ARMA in general format, this is ARMA in general format, this this is auto regressive and moving average in a general framework. So, that means, so all together there are three different schemes uh, you will find in this particular setup. One is called as auto regressive setups, moving average setups, and ARMA setups. So, now all together, so what we have discussed today is that so the basic of time series modeling. So, that two you know time series modeling is divided into two parts one is called as a univariate time series schemes, and another is called as a multivariate time, time series scheme. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, univariate time series schemes, so it is the endogenous variable as a function of. Uh, it is a, a lag, uh, lag uh, means endogenous variable as a function of uh, another endogenous variable, it is uh, sorry same endogenous variable, it is lag length. For instance, y t as a function of y t minus 1, y t minus 2 like y t minus k, but in the case of multivariate, uh, mul multivariate time series modeling, so uh, uh, there are at least two variables, then obviously, so, we will in one case it is called as auto regressive lag models, and another case it is called as a distributive lag models. Or in the case of auto regressive lag models, it is a endogenous variable as a function of exogenous variable and its lag, and uh, endogenous lag, and in the case of distributive lag model, it is the endogenous variable as a function of exogenous variable and exogenous lag. 
So, that is the complete uh, means clear cut difference between univariate time series modeling, multivariate time series modeling that to distributive log scheme and you can say autoregressive log scheme. So, now what we have discussed another scheme is called as a ARMA scheme. So, that to uh, with respect to univariate setup only. So, in the case of univariate setup, so what we have done? So, we 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 create three different uh, different modelings. So, that is autoregressive models, moving average models and autoregressive moving average models. So, in the scheme of autoregressive is that it is the endogenous variable as a function of uh, endogenous variable and its lag uh, and moving average scheme. So, it is the endogenous variable as a function of error term and its error lag. For instance, uh, uh, in that particular case, so first you start with the regressing y t with the y t minus 1, you provided the system will be say y t as a function of y t minus 1 only. So, then you find out the error terms. So, then again once you have error term you create a, 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 a error lag y t e t minus 1 e t minus 2 like this way. So, then you have to connect y t with e, with e, e t e t minus 1 e t minus 2 e t minus 3 like this way. So, it is this uh, say two way process. Okay. So, in that process uh, in that process it is called as a moving average scheme. Then finally, it is called as a ARMA. So, that means it is the integration of average average uh, autoregressive scheme and moving average scheme. That means it is the endogenous variable as a function of endogenous lag and error terms and error lag. So, this particular structure is called as a ARMA structures. In fact, ARMA has a different uh, order of integrations like you want to the moment we have put autoregressive auto 1, autoregressive 2, moving average 1, moving average 2 like this. So, similarly, we will call ARMA 1, ARMA 2, ARMA 3 like this way. So, uh, the, uh, 1, 2, 3 is called as a degree of uh, order of integration. So, we will discuss in detail in the next class. So, with this we can conclude this particular session. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.